and we'll do the intro as soon as ZZ moves out of the way. Hey, bada bing, bada boom, there I am. Hello, welcome to the JW Thoughts channel. My name is Wally, and today, as you saw from the thumbnail and the title, we have the year end report for Jehovah's Witnesses. But because I'm me, I didn't just look at this and say, oh, well, let's find some interesting things. No, I went back for 20 years and tried to find some more interesting points that I could from the grand totals. I made an Excel spreadsheet. I looked at doctrinal changes and maybe how this affects different things that happen within the organization themselves. So we're about to enter into 2022, or I guess by the time that this video is released, we'll be in 2022. So thank you so much for joining me and let us look at 20 years of Watchtower. Don't forget to drop a like on this video and subscribe to the channel. If I keep looking over, it's because I built a gigantic snowman and people always stop by to look at it and take pictures of it. So that's pretty cool. Maybe I'll post a picture of it on Patreon. Hey, if you're a member of Patreon, you might get to see a picture of my snowman. Pretty neat. <laughs> that was like the worst promo ever. Uh, what was I going to do? Yeah, I was going to say we got our... Tony Morris approved scotch. We got our fan favorite bougie water. ZZ's here wandering around. I'm here. And let's do this thing. All right, so I have been looking at numbers and using a lot of calculating no oh, there's another person taking a picture uh i've been using a lot of calculating i've been using the calculator trying to come up with a lot of different sort of interesting things so i'm a little bit completely absolutely a hundred percent burned out so my energy level might at some point drop off a little bit from the norm so please forgive me for that but anyway i started in 2000 and was looking at relevant data or things that i found relevant as well um i'll try in post to like show sections of exactly what i'm talking about just so you guys have some kind of visual reference to the things that i am on about so uh where to start i guess i mean we may as well talk about what happened in 2021 because that's probably what most people are interested in so the 2021 statistics there were 119,297 congregations, which was a decrease uh, from the previous year of 120,387. Uh, the average publishers was 8,480,147, which meant for a total percentage increase over the previous year as 0.7%. The number baptized was 171,393. That was the first time in the last who knows how long. I don't I looked back and I stopped after the 90s. I lost interest, but they haven't had a year where they had under 200,000 baptized in a long time. Uh, the hours spent preaching were the lowest they've been since 2 2006 and that was 1,423,039,000 uh, 30, and that number is a little bit reasonable just considering everything that's going on in the world and their pioneers hit a peak for as far back as I looked and I'm assuming this is going to be true but as far back as 1993 uh this is the absolute peak. So 1,350,138 regular pioneers, which I find very interesting. So that's some of the statistics from this year. Now, I think the most interesting to me was, I think we pretty much everyone has accepted that the Jehovah's Witnesses are on the decline. The birth death ratio, population increase, however you want to calculate that, is about 1%. Um, it's very dynamic and hard to track exactly, so let's just be practical so we can move on with our lives so we're not spending years trying to discover like the intricacies of, is it 1.2% or is it 1%? We'll, we'll just use easy figures here. So it's about 1%. And as soon as Watchtower dips below that or is right around that, 
they're pretty much a stagnant organization. So we see a continuation of that. We don't have the decrease that they had last year of the 0.6, but it is an increase of 0.7, which is still below the birth death ratio. So they're not even able to keep their own members um, going on and on and on with this belief system, let alone the fact they're spending over a billion hours trying to get other people to join their group. So they can't even keep their own members, and they're also maximizing their time and effort by by preaching, and it's not resulting in anything. The pioneers I fi found interesting because it has, as I said before, it ha has hit an all-time high. So that was one of the numbers that didn't really get affected by the pandemic. More people were signing up to Pioneer, which is funny because there's never been an easier time to be a Pioneer as a Jehovah's Witness because you can do it from the comfort of your home and Watchtower doesn't really have any legs to stand on. They can't tell you to do anything else because they're not necessarily allowed to. So the fact that the Pioneers are going up even though that the, the number of hours is going down indicates to me a hardening of the core of Jehovah's Witnesses. We're getting that lunatic fringe, the super hardcore, never going to leave, never going to wake up. We are in it for life and obviously as you get more and more radicalized then the numbers of like elders and pioneers is probably going to go up even though congregation and your overall percentage increase is going down as well now just as like a full picture of everything that i was looking at today uh from 2000 to 2021 now the average publisher in 2000 was 7 million uh 780 or sorry 5,783,003. And then the average publisher in 2021 was 8,480,147. So that's a difference of 2,697,144. I'm sure in post there will be actual numbers on the screen somewhere over here. Or maybe I'll put them here. Or here. I don't know what I'll do. It doesn't really matter. But... If you take the number of people baptized in that similar time period, so remember there's about 2,600,000 2, um, that was the average publisher increase over that time period. The total number of baptisms, though, equals 5,886,459, which leads us to a question of, where are these 3,100,000 something people? Where's this 3.1 million? Which I guess is representative of like... Uh-oh, Wally doing math in his head. Scary. 34%? 37? 30, 34? 37? 30, 30, 30, 30, yeah, 37. Uh, where are this 3.1 million or this like 37% of witnesses? Well... Again, if we look at the birth-death ratio, it still doesn't account for that because you're not going to have 37% of the population gone, which can only lead to the conclusion that they've become inactive, disassociated, or disfellowshipped. So since 2000, there's roughly... I mean, I guess we could account for maybe the amount of people that died, but there's probably around 3 million people that are no longer Jehovah's Witnesses, which is hilarious considering their increase has been under 3 million at 2.6. So more people are, I, in my mind, how it works is more people are leaving this organization um, than they've ever experienced in their entire lives and or that we've I've experienced in my entire life because I was raised and I was a witness and proudly always talking about the increase that the Watchtower was having. And getting there right before I left, and I'll get into that soon, it was not really a point of pride talking about numbers anymore, because the numbers were blah. And I think I know, and I have cracked the, the secrets of the universe, I've opened the Magician's Code book, and I'm going to share it, with you of people of the internet today. So that'll be exciting, but I'll wait just for a second before I quite get into that. 
Um, the other thing that I found really fascinating is the number of hours that it takes. So if you take the total number of hours from 2000 to 2021, it's 35,216,000 or 216,760,973. Baptisms, 5,886,459. And then my computer, please don't crash, please, please, for the love of God, please. Ah, good. No, God has not infected my computer today. Yeehaw. Uh, anyway, so if you take that number, now, in order to do this little thought experiment, again, this isn't super, like, detailed or specific, and we don't have actual numbers. Watchtower does. They just don't provide them. So we just, people like me have to kind of put it all together. So I think about, if I'm being generous... 10% of witnesses come from their door-to-door -door or outside. I, I feel like that's a pretty generous percentage to give because in my head, I think it's a lot lower. I, I, I would probably say, if you were to ask me honestly, I would say probably maybe like 3%. But we'll give them 10% of witnesses coming from their door-to-door -door work and 90% are coming from people that are just born in to the organization. So if you do that math, that means they are spending 60,000 hours per baptism. So per one baptism that's coming from the field, if we say that 10% of their growth is coming from the field, which seems reasonable enough, you are left with 60,000 hours needing to be spent in order to baptize one Jehovah's Witness. And they baptized five million, over five million, almost six million in this time period we're talking about. Now, there's the old adage that in order to become a master of something, oh, another person's stopping and taking a picture. <laughs> That's cool. Um, in order to become a master of something, it takes about 10,000 hours of practice. So at 60,000 per baptism, that means you could have six experts in a particular field. Pick whatever you want. Science, literature, music, art, engineering, wh whatever subject you want. And you take six people for every one person that's baptized. But how many people were baptized? Over 5,800,000. So if you have six experts in a field, for so for every one Jehovah's Witness, if you would have just taken all of that time, all of the time and resources and energy, human effort that went in to baptizing those 5 million people, you could have given the world 35 million experts. Do I need to even say how fundamentally that could change the world? Having 35 million experts in particular fields running around on planet Earth. And remember, all of the time spent is voluntary. They're not getting paid. None of that. So it's people with the time with the resources, with the energy. And I know it's exactly not a one-to-one -one because it's spread out over a lot of people and it's not condensed down, but it is an interesting thought experiment at the very least to think that you could have a nation of experts if you didn't have Jehovah's... If, you, if Watchtower didn't exist, you'd have a nation of experts. And I find that really interesting. And I remember even as I was a witness, I would do these calculations too, like how many hours are being spent in trying to get one person. And I think the least efficient is the cart witnessing because cart witnessing is absolutely the biggest waste of time that Watchtower, I think, has ever really introduced. And I mean, it, it comes through in their numbers because ever since they introduced cart witnessing, down, 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 down. Um, let me peruse this real briefly. Maybe we'll just have a sip of whiskey. Please join me. It's the new year. Yeehaw. Ah, uh, yeah, the Pioneers. So this one's interesting, and this is something I'll actually call out to the good people of YouTube to try and work out, because I've been at this all day, 
and it's 4.30, it's dark, and uh, yeah, I'm pretty tired of sitting at the computer. So I'll just leave this part to you guys, uh, this little mystery to figure out. So here, I'll, I'll, I'll create the little, the little lore. Pretend like you're on a dinner murder mystery train thing, and I, I'm giving you guys the scene. You just need to do the, the work and figure it all out, and then comment below and tell me so that way you feel really smart. <laughs> um, in, let's see, in 1999 is when, wait, was it 99? Yeah, it was in 1999. They decreased the hours uh, required for a regular Pioneer from 90 to 70. So for a long, for I think for a while it was 100, then they decreased it to 90, and then it went down to 70 for regular Pioneers and 50 for auxiliary Pioneers. So you would think that man, a lot of people would start pioneering because it went from 90 to 70. That's a big difference. That's 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 a lot of hours. 20 hours is not insignificant to just... If I asked you right now, hey, can you find 20 hours uh, per month that you can dedicate to something? You'd be like, go know yourself. <laughs> like, that doesn't make any sense. Like, no way. So that's a big difference. So it had the initial effect that they wanted because in 1999 they had 738,000 regular pioneers and then in 2000 they had 805 so they had the big spike that they were looking for but then the next year so the next year after they change it from 90 to 70 when you would think okay we're going to see a big increase it actually goes down to 787 then the next year, 2002, it goes to 798, and then it's back up to 825 in 2004, or 2003, and then 2004, it goes to 858. And then, this is the mystery. It goes, their number of pioneers, so remember they change it from 90 to 70, it goes from around 800,000, drops into the sevens, back up into the 800K, in 2005, 623,308, so a 27% drop-off in one year for Pioneers. And that's a few years after they say it goes from 90 to 70 as the requirement. I could not figure out for the life of me what happened in 2005 specifically that would cause a significant drop-off in pioneers like that and across the board 2005 is a very weird time uh, you have an increase that's down to 1.3 percent so their average increase is usually around two percent just a little bit above that but in 2005 it's only 1.3 they have a decrease in the number of people baptized. So it had been for the last previous five years, it had kind of steadily been going up. And then in 2005, it goes down to 247,000 people baptized. And this is a real humdinger. The number of hours spent in the ministry went down as well, which is very rare. When, when you're looking through these statistics, one thing that is pretty solid is the number of pioneers going up and the number of hours spent going up. And this is a year, 2005, where things go wrong. So if anyone out there can figure out what happened in 2005 that caused this decrease in pioneers, decrease in the number of people baptized, uh, decrease in hours spent um, in the ministry... I would be really keen to know exactly what's going on there. The only thing, and obviously, to me being me, this is the funniest thing I could come up with, but that's when Tony Morris was announced as a member of the governing body. <laughs> so Tony Morris is announced as a member of the governing body, and bada bing, bada boom, now... <laughs> Now, all of a sudden, all the numbers are going down. Now someone is walking in the yard and uh, and taking pictures over there with their kid. That's pretty cute. Hey, Zizi. This is me recording a video. Zizi is meowing because he wants me to play with his toy. Come on. Waiting on you, bud. 
just watch that disappear. And now people are in the yard. Anyway, this is super scuffed, but it's okay. We're, we're fine. We'll get through it together. And also I can edit anything out I want. Okay, so now for the thing that I think points most clearly that Watchtower is dying. They are just bleeding members. They're absolutely crumbling. And I believe, it's my personal opinion, that within the next 10 to 20 years, they pretty much will just cease to exist in any functional way. I mean, I think maybe there will still be something, but it will kind of be like Scientology, where there's only maybe a few hundred thousand and not millions of members. But anyway, that's that's a separate point. Or they'll go full force, just be like every other Christian nation, everyone's going to heaven, and they'll just completely have to rebrand entirely. That could be another option, but we'll see. But anyway, as we know, uh, in 2014, that is when the JW Broadcasting got started. That is when the governing body basically came out from behind the curtain and we could see them. No longer was the governing body these revered, studious, biblical, spiritual men that everyone imagined. So in that first year of the JW Broadcasting, we had the Honor Jehovah with Your Valuable Things, the classic Stephen Lett, where he's basically begging for money, and it was one of the most blatant, obvious things. And then we also had in that video their plans of accelerating the uh, building and construction of kingdom halls because so many congregations needed that. So he was asking for money. So in t between 2014 and 2015, their hours decreased again. And that's when they went to being below 2%. So their, their in average increase year over year, starting in 2015, was 1.5, 1.8, 1.4, 1.4, 1.3, negative 0.6, and 0.7. So the growth has been r just remarkably stagnant um, in this particular time period. Uh, for instance, the number of baptized is reported as being... 1.8 million, where the growth is only 490,000. So it's their growth rate is just completely come to an absolute halt. And that's funny because there's also what happened in Australia to consider around this time as well. And I think those two things and just the whole um, I gotta be careful with what I say here because YouTube doesn't like me saying certain things. But the whole narrative shift of the public perception of Jehovah's Witnesses took a little bit of a turn. They came out from behind the curtain so that way everyone um, on the internet had free access to seeing what the governing body members were like. And we were also horrified at how many cases that the Watchtower was dealing with when it came to their policies and their practices when it came to the protection of children. And this is the perfect storm for exposing Watchtower for what it is. Just another man-made organization that they, I guess, are unique in that I still do believe that their leaders are people that genuinely believe in what they're teaching. They genuinely think that they are saving lives and doing the right thing. How they can come to that conclusion is beyond me, but I still tend to fall on that side because I think with their resources and with their access to power, they would do, if you were evil and you were trying to get something out of it, I feel like you would be doing more. And it is, I mean, I... It is enough just to be comfortable in the position that you have and you travel all over the globe and you're revered as a spokesperson for God and blah, 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 blah. And, that, and that's fine, but I still tend to think that they might just be completely delusional, or at least a majority of them would be. Uh, but yeah, I think 20, once they started the broadcast, 
completely ruined themselves. I think they absolutely destroyed the organization that they had been fighting so hard because once they come out from behind the curtain, my goodness, was it a mess. Um, a few uh, more little tidbits for everyone that has stayed around uh, watching the video for this long. Thank you. You're super cool. And people that watch the videos for a long time, they're my friends. <laughs> that was a weird thing to say. I guess it wasn't weird. It was wholesome. Anyway, um, let's talk about their money that they spend on their special full-time servants. So, I found this particularly interesting in the context of how much uh, their numbers are increasing versus how much they're spending. So, I'm just going to run down the whole list and maybe we'll have like a scrolling list here. But starting with uh, the years from 2000 to 2001, uh, they were reporting how much money they're spending taking care of their special full-time workers. We don't get to be treated with the exact ins and outs. We don't get to open Watchtower's books to see exactly, is that money going to helping Tony Morris buy more scotch, or is that helping someone in Peru that's a, that's a missionary to buy a scooter or a motorcycle? I, we probably know the answer to that. Anyway, so from 2000 to 2001, they spent 66 million, and then in 2001, they increased to 71 million. So that's a 7% increase. The next year, 72 million spent, so a 2% increase. The next year, 80 million spent, which is an increase of 80% or 8%. Uh, in 2004, they go to 93 million, which is a 16.25% increase of, ex of uh, spending on Special Pioneers. So that's pretty interesting because that's the year before there was that drop off that I mentioned in Pioneers, in total hours spent, and in the number baptized. And it's the second biggest increase from the previous year percentage wise of their spending. So when they spent more, they had less less people baptized, less increase, and that significant drop off on pioneers that I still can't figure out. Anyway, uh, the next year it's a 12% increase to 104 million. Uh, next year 111 million, 6% increase. Uh, dropping down a few in 2008 they go all the way up and this is their biggest increase in spending and that is up to 141 million and that is a 17 percent increase uh, and then they sort of taper off and they have a decrease in spending so they go from 141 million to 140 so that's a slight drop off and then the year after that in 2010, back up to 155 million, which is a 10% increase. Then you have 173 million, which is an 11% increase. Uh, anyway, you guys are sort of seeing the pattern. So they're spending more and more and more and more and more and more money. So in 2000, they're spending 66 million. Uh, and then in 2014, in 2015 they're spending 236 million dollars and that is when the JW broadcasting that's when they're trying to do the, I think the move to Warwick is happening around then so you can see they're spending a lot more and coincidentally that is when Stephen Lett comes out and says hey we've been running the numbers and we have sort of a shortage going on here and we're planning to do all that so the next year, after Stephen Lett gives that talk, it's the biggest percentage decrease. So they go from 236 million to 238, which is about an 11% decrease in spending. Uh, I find this really interesting that they were kind of like spend, 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 spend. And since the 2016, they've sort of leveled off where it's like 5% increase, 6% increase, 4%, 3%. 1% decrease uh, this last year. 
So I think they've sort of maybe had a little bit of a revelation and how they need to be careful with how they're spending the witnesses' money. But right at the, um, I guess, sort of peak of it all was when some of the older governing body members were dying. So between, I think it's 2000... Uh, I have it over here somewhere. Uh, between 99 and 2003, you had Barry, Swingle, Klein, and Henschel that were members of the governing body. They all died. 2005, uh, Jeffrey Jackson and Tony Morris join. And then 2006, Sidlick and Schroeder die. In 2007, Barber dies. So you have like this period where they start spending a lot more money when you have a new crop of governing body members taking over. So the governing body members that we know they became the majority in this time period when Watchtower increased its spending um, to like an all-time high where they were just like going up, 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 up. I mean, it's really from 2000 that it really kind of shot up. But they did sort of learn their, their lessons, I suppose. But the funniest thing to me, though, is the discrepancy between increases of spending and increases in the number of Jehovah's or people that are joining the Jehovah's Witnesses. So you have a, a increase of spending of 17%, and yet your increase is 2%. You have an increase of 10%, yet it's 2%. Increase of 11%, 2 You get what I'm saying. So they're spending a lot more money, supposedly, and they're not seeing any results for it. And it took them a while of spending, 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 spending to realize, oh... We need to be careful with this money that we have. And lo and behold, that's when they decide to make the move to upstate New York and sell off all their very, very valuable property in Brooklyn and move to upstate New York and tell people that basically the money that we got from selling all that property is going to cover the building expenses, which is just the biggest, like, in your spit in your face lie you could possibly tell someone <laughs> like there the the building of warwick would have had to be more expensive than like the burj khalifa <laughs> for that to be true for those numbers to work out it's it's just hilarious to think that with their volunteer labor and their volunteer equipment and <laughs> that it could be more expensive that anyway we don't have to get into all that um, anyway, I guess that's about all I had to say as far as this extravaganza of numbers. If you guys enjoyed this, which I'm sure pretty much nobody would because it was just me mentioning a bunch of numbers, then, hey, thank you for sticking around. It might have been tough. It might have been brutal. But you are a real champ, and you are, uh, cool. You're cool. Did you know that? You're cool. Uh, no wicked stunts because I do need to get to editing this. It's already 5 o'clock and blah, blah, blah. It's New Year's Eve and it's 5 o'clock. I want to actually not be editing videos. <laughs> so thank you to everyone that signed up to the Patreon. Thank you for people that have sent in donations via PayPal. I very, very much appreciate that. And 2022, we are looking to expand, grow, and keep the channel moving forward. So thank you guys so much. I hope you have a wonderful new year or start to it. And we will see you on Wednesday, like normal. Back to regular uh, updating schedule. Wednesday, Saturday, Wednesday, Saturday. So that's the goal. Hopefully we'll be more consistent with that in the next year. Anyway, cheers. Hats off to you. You guys are real ones. Met all of the goals that I had for starting a YouTube channel. Uh, what I wanted to have per views. I just was looking at like what my goals were starting it. I wanted to average a uh, thousand views per video, and now we're averaging a thousand video or like fifteen hundred views per day. So that's pretty neat. I wanted to have a thousand subscribers. There's thirty five hundred. So hopefully we can uh, double that, or I guess the goal was that, so we triple that. So I guess by next year, ten thousand subscribers. That's the goal. So if you're not subscribed and you're still watching, well, no one is. Okay, bye.